And, and really, I guess the technology uh, ends up being a combination of uh, multiple trends right, or, or technology developments. And so you've got uh, machine learning, you've got voice recognition, you've got some level of artificial intelligence in there. Uh, maybe help us understand, like, is that a sequential uh, thing where one technology gets built and it's added to another? Or did you have to wait until all of those technologies reach a certain point and then you put, kind of put them all together to actually get the core of the technology? Well, all innovation, as you know, is nonlinear. <laughs> so none of it is ready at the same time that some, some other function is, is ready. But people like us don't sit around twiddling our thumbs waiting for the a perfect moment. So what you're doing is you're constantly iterating. And as you know, best of breed uh, pieces snap in, you go ahead and drop that um, uh, module in there. Your engineers develop something else, you drop that module in there. Your scientists develop something else, you drop that module in there. So you may have, you know, start with a baseline acoustic model, but then you have a better one that fits um, uh, the use cases. You may have a baseline language model, you drop in a, a better one that supports your use cases, whether it was messaging, voicemail processing, call mining, a myriad of different use cases at the time. What was funny is as we were fundraising um, in um, uh, the 2007, 2008 timeframe for our VC round, a lot of people were scratching their heads saying, I'm not sure that I would use an AI assistant, but would you allow my other portfolio company here? Um, I think some examples were GotVoice, Umail, Ring, uh, Ring Central, and several others. Would you allow them access to your platform? And so by default, we ended up becoming this Twilio for speech recognition for AI services. Um, as, as an accidental discovery, if you will, because the VCs that we were pitching um, in some ways allowed their portfolio companies to diligence us by becoming customers. Yeah, that, that's great when the uh, the people you're pitching end up doing uh, business development for you, for sure. That's right. <laughs> um, and, and so obviously, you kind of described what you had uh, on the technology front in 2006, uh, 2007. Uh, by the time that you guys actually sold to Amazon, um, what did the technology do uh, in Yap, right? Like, wh wh how far did you guys get before that acquisition occurred? Yeah, so um, Prion, which is the new company's name, was actually the code name of the engine that eventually became the nucleus of, of, of Alexa. So we knew that we needed to have a totally independent stack um, because we didn't want, um, uh, you know, to be at the uh, uh, beck and call, if you will, of other tech uh, providers. Uh, so we had a little bit of a secret mission uh, behind the scenes, and we built a um, um, a great research organization inside of a company, which is not something that you typically find uh, in, a, in a startup uh, as we were plotting complete independence. And so it was a state-of-the-art speech engine that had you know, some newfangled abilities that even to this day we can't uh, talk about because uh, you know, a lot of people think that you invent things and you patent everything, but you typically don't. The, the, there are certain core capabilities you leave as trade secrets. For instance, Google always um, was annoyed um, um, that they published PageRank, where in hindsight they wish that they didn't publish uh, PageRank because it was such a critical part of, of uh, their search acumen. Yeah, that makes sense. And, and I guess help us understand in kind of layman's terms how exactly voice recognition works, right? We use it every day um, across all these different devices, but what's actually happening when I verbally, verbalize a command or a question, like how does the technology um, ingest that? And then what's going on in the background before it presents me the answer? Yeah, the, the easiest way for you to think about that is it's turning audio files and converting them into text. In order to do that, it takes the audio stream and uh, um, uh, basically takes everything that you say and converts it into phonemes, and then it clusters the phonemes together um, uh, in, in a search to see, hey, are these, is this the right word for this combination of phonemes? And then it goes to the next set of phonemes. Is this the right word in the set of phonemes? And then it goes to a third um, set of phonemes and says, is this the right word? And then um, um, you have this concept of bigrams, trigrams, quadgrams, and what have you, where it says, hey, is this sequence of words together, does it make sense, or is it another combination of words? Because every time you have a word that it identifies, it also has something called an end best, meaning it has a list of alternative words that it might be, right? So think of a homonym like two. Is it T-O, T-W-O, or T-O-O? Well, you need to know the context before and afterwards to, uh, to figure out which one it might be. Yeah, that, that makes a lot of sense. And, and I guess then one of the limiting factors to uh, the accuracy is um, how it ingests, the, like how clearly can you hear the audio and then uh, the conversion to text 
And then what you're talking about here is almost like the contextual information that it's able to derive from the other parts of the sentence. Right. And, and, and that's why, you know, having a great engineering team paired with a great research team is so important, right? Because the research team works on the models and the engines, um, all the natural language, everything that you th think about. On the engineering team, we were uh, blissfully lucky because we had some of the original folks that worked on the iPod engineering team uh, worried about our audio um, uh, capabilities, right? Our audio stack. And so they were able to find disconnects where sometimes some of the carriers uh, um, uh, that y'all use for your um, uh, cellular networks may have had certain uh, devices, uh, recording devices misconfigured that were constraining um, uh, the audio uh, quality, which leads to poor accuracy. And so we had all sorts of routines to cleanse audio and then um, feed the best representation of your voice to the recognizers and the, and the models in order to have the best accuracy. It took Google about 10 years with all these newfangled methods that you heard of post 2012 to catch up to the level of accuracy that we had 10 years ago. That's how tight of a platform it was.